My name is Bill Golis. I'll be presenting today. Uh, we'll be talking about the return material authorization, returning of material in Epicor Kinetic. So here we go. All right, so what's an RMA? This is a authorization to a return an ordered material that has an issue potentially. Uh, there could be a quality issue, a uh, damage in shipment, et cetera, et cetera. Typically, your RMA is going to be initialized by a call or uh, some other communication from your customer indicating they have a problem. Typically, it's your customer service or sales who will create the RMA. The RMA processing to create the RMA is located in sales management, CRM, general operations. It's also in financial management, material management, and order management. So there's several places that you can create a RMA from. And this will create a, a record, and you can print a document with an RMA number for the customer to return the material to your facility. So to create the RMA, you're going to enter your customer. You have to have a customer. You must have an order number that the uh, that the material is associated with. If your settings force you to have a reason, you'll have to have a reason for the return from your reason codes. And you'll have to have a quantity. And you should verify that the unit of measure is correct on the RMA. That's pretty straightforward. At that time, you can add a credit memo right away if desired. Again, this is going to be a case-by-case uh, -case basis you know, based on your organization, based on the relationship with the customer. If they're an excellent customer, they have a problem, do you want to put in a credit memo right away without even seeing the material? You can do that right away, or you can do it subsequently. And once you receive the material, once it's, it's inspected, et cetera. While creating that RMA, you can also print the RMA form to, to email to the customer or send however you send it. You know, typically they would put a copy of that in the package to return it. So when it comes onto your dock, the you know receiving personnel will know that this is a returned and that they can enter it properly as a RMA receipt. And again, at the same time, you can print and post a credit memo from AR invoice entry, which you'll be taken to from the RMA processing a program if you choose so. And we'll see that in the demo. And once that's sent out, you're going to receive in the re the return material, and once it arrives back at your facility, this is also done from the RMA processing program. Uh, there is a returns tab on there. You enter a, a new receipt line, and it will populate automatically, but you want to verify your information, and if the quantity is different or anything else, you would fix that record there at receipt. And once it's received, then you're going to process that return material. There's an open RMA report, so you can view what you know, what return materials are out there that have an open status in the record. And then you can see the RMA receipts from the inspection processing as well. If you go into inspection in the QA, there is a selection that will show you a RMA things that are in the inspection queue, but they must be processed from RMA processing. If you select them from the inspection processing queue, it's going to take you to the program for RMA processing. So it is a separate from the inspection processing program, but it, but they're linked. Okay. So once you have that material and you're inspecting it, you're going to have four options from the RMA processing program. You can disposition it to a job. So you can, you have to have a job created, a job for the rework, you know, to repair the item. This is a, a you know, choice based on the situation. If the rework is easy, you know, you're just going to do a get half an hour, or, you know, there's there, some cosmetic work and it isn't worth your time to create a job and, you know, to release that job and track all your, your activities, then you might just say return and, you know, do that work out, that rework outside of Epicor. You can put comments into that, into the record that, you know, that identify what you did. If you're going to have a job though, you're going to have to create the job, engineer the job, and you're going to have to run the material through the job before you can ship it again. The rework is extensive, and you need to track what you did, or if there's a lot in serial numbering, et cetera, it probably makes a lot more sense you know, to have a job because then you can track your activities precisely. You can fail the material then and say, hey, you know what, this is, you know, this is bad. That's going to move it to the DMR processing module. And from there, you can also move to rework, you can scrap, et cetera, uh, the standard things from a DMR. But when you fail from the RMA, it will create a DMR record and you have to continue from there. On uh, the return shipment to customer, that's going to allow you to just, you know, go ahead and, and send it back. And you can also move it into stock. And when you move it into stock, you might say, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. 
Uh, but you know, I'm not going to send this same piece back to the customer because they didn't like it, or the customer may say, you know, they don't want it back. Uh, you know, we're not going to you know, do business and hey, whatever. So you have the option to move it into stock. So it's job, fail, return, or stock. So now let's see how that actually works in Epicor Kinetic. All right. So now we're looking at Epicor Kinetic here. We are going to first create an RMA. So we're going to go order management, general operations, and to return material process. Let's run this in Kinetic. So we're going to do, we're going to create a new RMA. So it's today's date. Who's our customer? I happen to know this one is going to be Code of Bears. So we'll put us in. We'll search. There we are. Okay. And we're going to save our RMA. And then we have it created. Now, right now, uh, it's just identifying the customer. We need to create a line. I'm going to go to the line details so we can see all the information here. And this is going to want to ask us, hey, what's the order number? We're going to first say new line. And then the order here is going to be 5468, which I've created. Line one, release one. It's going to populate our part uh, and our description. It has no quantity. Now we're going to put in, say, three pieces here. And then we're going to identify a reason. What is the reason that this is being returned? We're going to say it was a defective assembly, at least that's what we were told. And then we can put in comments in here as well. So I'll, I'll put a user stamp on there. We'll say Joe reports. Okay, that way we're going to have that recorded. We can also, and we can save that right now. We could do credit, but we won't yet. Uh, let's go ahead and execute a print of the RMA form. Go ahead and look at that. While that's running, we will look at the receipts tab here now. You know, we've sent the RMA form out. That I'll show you here in a second. The customer has returned material to us. We're going to go to receipt details because we can see more. I'm going to add a new receipt and it's going to populate in with the, with the current date, with the part record, with the quantity that was on the RMA. So we're going to assume they sent them all back. If they did not, we're going to adjust the quantity. Here is the form that, that we would send to the customer. This is the base form, of course. It's going to have the return to location, which is going to be your address or our address, what the customer's name and address is a description of your line information, your reason code, along with any uh, and notes. And then they can, you know, take this and they can put this into your a shipment that's going to be returned to us. Okay, so now that we received it back in, we're creating our new receipt here. Our quantity is three. We say that's good. We're going to identify the location. We're going to save that receipt. So now at this point, and we're ready to process this. We've now received in the material. So we are going to go to RMA process. From here, let's go ahead and use the kinetic interface. So here's our RMA that we just created, 1010. We're going to select it. Okay. And it's going to populate in with, with the information. It shows that the status of the record is open. And we're going to see here that we have the single line. Okay. And now we're going to go here and we're going to, we're going to uh, disposition. So let's go to our line details here. And we're going to go ahead and we have our receipts here and we have our receipt details. So from our detail here, we're going to create a, I'm in the wrong form. We need to be in RMA dispositions. So here when we select, okay, so now we need to create a new disposition for, now here we, we had three pieces that were returned. Our options are gonna be job, fail, return, or stock. Now I don't have a job created, so we're gonna start with fail, and we're gonna, we have the option to do one through three. We're gonna fail two of these, and we're gonna say, why are we failing it? We're gonna say it's cosmetic issues. We're gonna identify who did the inspectors, and then that is good for that record. We're going to now add one more, because we have three pieces here. I'll go to the, to the detail. So dispose to here, we're going to uh, return this back to the customer. Right, it'll go with stock. We're going to return this this one to stock because we're going to uh, refulfill this customer from our uh, other stock. Here we're saying, why is it good? If we're going to move it back to stock, there is no reason required because by definition, this is it has no problems. Identify our inspector, and that's where we're going to put it at. Uh, that's where it came from. Here's where we're putting it into our warehouse. We need to identify what bin if we're going to a request to move and we'll put it into zero zero now here we can put in a comment no issues and once we select that and save our record then we're going to see that that all three pieces have been moved so when we go back to our dispositions here we've got one and two if we go back to our details that sets so and there were three pieces here that we had to disposition 
if we go back to our RMA processing now, and we'll see that it's, it's no longer here because it's closed automatically because we dispositioned all three pieces. If we look at closed RMAs, we're going to see here it is, 10-10. So we can review what happened here. Now, at this point, we haven't done a credit, and we're going to say, let's add a credit. We can even do this once it's closed, even though we... You know, we scrapped two of these. We scrapped two pieces that we failed, and we returned one to stock. So we're going to apply three pieces to this credit memo. This is going to take us a right into AR invoice maintenance. Now, perhaps this will be done by accounting, and most likely. So you know, you may have an internal process to request this, but here we would probably want to have the have the invoice that we actually uh, was associated with this sales order. Did we do an invoice? I know we did. It should be 10-320, I believe. Let's see if it's here. And it is 10-320. So let's identify the invoice. Uh, it shows the amount of 450, and that's going to be here. So let's go ahead, and then we need to check the line. Here it shows three pieces. Now we now we only scrapped two, and we're going to return one. So let's just give them credit for the two, and that should that'll update the price. They were $150 each. Once we save that, we're going to have to go back here. Okay, now we've created our credit memo. Then this, then from here, we would need to go to, to actions and line. Okay, so once we created that, that's just a request. This would create a record for uh, for accounting. So this would, it depends if this is going to be created by your QA department or by accounting. But, but the actual credit memo would be done from AR invoice and processing and that's where you can pick the actual credit memo let's go ahead and go into financial and ar and gen ops and if we go to a our invoice entry again this is probably going to be done by accounting we'll do a group called lunch and learn and then from here we should be able to go to our actions and get and there's going to be an rma and and demand credits from here Let's go ahead and so we don't see too many records here. We're going to search for Coda Bears and we'll look for that. And do we have, there was two in there, but you can see here's the one that we did today is that one. It should be for three pieces. And so let's go ahead and print the invoice. So you can see this is what would be sent back to the customer as a credit memo. And then this would need to be to posted and the edit list a review, but that's going to be accounting functions. And once you do that request, from the RMA processing, you know, you, you're going to have to have some kind of a mechanism to notify accounting or, you know, they have to have a dashboard or have a process where they're going to look for those on a regular basis. <clears throat> because once you create that request, it's going to be in the queue for AR, but it won't, it won't automatically happen and there won't be a notification. So where invoice go, it should be here. Let me see. I didn't get the invoice. Well, there it is. Finally. So this, this is going to be the credit memo here that you send back for the customer for the parts that, that we deemed were defective. The fact that we had the one that returned to stock, we would be reshipping th uh, one back to them, or you know, we could have credited them all three if they didn't want that one back. Again, this is going to depend on, on the situation. And that is what we have for today. Any questions? Question from Kimberly. Can you access the credit memo from Tracker and Print? Yes, you can. Because it is, you know, just like any other invoice, it's just a, and you're saying from the invoice tracker, correct? If you're saying from another tracker, or are you saying from the RMA tracker? Uh, yes, AR invoice tracker. Yep, you certainly can. Thanks much, everyone. Have a great day.